Rocket Ship XM, aka Expedition Moon and originally Rocket Ship Expedition Moon is a 1950 American black and white science fiction film from Lippert Pictures, the first outer space adventure of the post World War II era. The film was produced and directed by Kurt Newman and stars Lloyd Bridges, O.S.A. Masson, John Emery, Noah Beery Jr., Hugh O'Brien, and Morris Ankrum. Rocket Ship XM tells the story of a moon expedition that, through a series of unforeseen events, winds up traveling instead to distant Mars. Once on the Red Planet, its crew discovers the remnants of a Martian civilization destroyed long ago by atomic war and now reverted to barbarism. Topic. Plot Four men and a woman blast into outer space from the White Sands Proving Ground aboard the RXM rocket ship Expedition Moon on humanity's first expedition to Luna. Halfway there, after surviving their jettisoned and runaway first stage in a meteoroid storm, their engines suddenly quit. Recalculating fuel ratios and swapping fuel tank positions fixes the problem. After the engines fire, RXM rapidly careens out of control on a rapid heading beyond the moon. Lowered oxygen pressure also causes the crew to slowly pass out. They gradually revive much later and discover that they have traveled some 50 million miles and are now on a direct heading toward Mars. Quick calculations reveal that RXM is only 50,000 miles away. Dr. Carl Ekstrom, John Emery, is forced to pause and observe respectfully while something infinitely greater assumes control. RXM passes through the Martian atmosphere and lands safely. The next morning the scientists, clad in aviation oxygen masks due to the low pressure, begin exploring the desolate surface. They come across physical evidence of a now-dead advanced Martian civilization, a partially buried in the sand, stylized, art deco or tiki culture-like metal face sculpture and, in the distance Moderna architecture-like ruins. Their Geiger counter registers dangerous radiation levels, keeping them well away, from the levels detected, there was once an atomic war on Mars in the distant past. Finding cave refuge, the scientists notice in the distance the primitive descendants of that civilization emerging from behind boulders and creeping toward them. Amazed, Dr. Ekstrom comments, From atomic age to stone age. Soon after leaving, two of the explorers encounter a dark-haired woman who has lost her footing and rolled down a hill toward them. She is blind, with thick, milky cataracts on both eyes. She screams upon hearing their oxygen mask distorted voices. The radiation burned tribesmen attack, throwing large rocks and stone axes. Armed with only a revolver and a bolt-action rifle, the explorers defend themselves, purposely missing the primitives. Dr. Ekstrom is killed by a stone axe. Navigator Chamberlain Hugh O'Brien is badly injured by a large thrown rock. The survivors finally make their way back to the RXM. As the RXM nears Earth, the survivors calculate that they have no fuel for a landing. Colonel Graham contacts their base and reports their dire status to Dr. Fleming, Morris Ankrum, who listens intently and wordlessly over headphones. Colonel Graham's report is not heard, but Fleming's subtle reactions tells of the crew's odyssey, their discovery of a once advanced civilization destroyed long ago by atomic war, and of the crew fatalities at the hands of Martian descendants reverted to barbarism. Colonel Graham and Dr. Van Horn embrace as the RXM begins its uncontrolled descent, consoling one another in the moments left to them. Through a porthole, they bravely watch their rapid descent into the wilds of Nova Scotia. The press is later informed by a shaken Dr. Fleming that the entire crew has perished. When they ask if the mission was a failure, he confidently responds with conviction, stating that all theories about manned spaceflight and exploration have now been proven. He continues, underscoring the point that a dire warning has been received that could very well mean the salvation of humanity. A new spaceship, the RXM-2, begins construction tomorrow. 
The pioneering exploration continues. Topic. Cast Lloyd Bridges as Call, Floyd Graham, Pilot O.S.A. Masson as Dr. Lisa Van Horn, Ph.D. in Chemistry John Emery as Dr. Carl Ekstrom, Physicist and RxM Designer Noah Beery Jr. as Maj. William Corrigan, Flight Engineer Hugh O'Brien as Harry Chamberlain, astronomer and navigator. Morris Ankrum as Dr. Ralph Fleming, project director. Topic: Film score. The evocative soundtrack was written by American composer Ferd Grofe, who used a theremin in portions of the score. This was the first use of an electronic musical instrument in a science fiction film. The theremin would later become strongly identified with the genre in the years to come. During the film's post-production, Grofe's score was conducted by film and TV composer, arranger Albert Glasser. Later on, the soundtrack would have its first release in 1977 on LP Runtime 37 to 16 from Starlog Records, Senior 1000. The album contains a bonus track not used in the film. The CD version of the soundtrack was released in 2012 and was produced by Monstrous Movie Music M1965 in an edition limited to 1000 copies. The CD's 16-page illustrated booklet contains extensive information about the film score, which includes pages from Grofe's original handwritten score and photos related to the film production. 1. Main Title 121 2. Good Luck 153 3. Stand By to Turn 50 4. The Motors Conk Out 255 5 Palomar Observatory 111 6 Floyd Whispers 157 7 Floyd and Lisa at Window 256 8 We See Mars 206 9 The Landing on Mars 317 10 The Ruins 310 11 I Saw the Martians 102 12. The Atomic Age to Stone Age, The Chase, 459. 13. The Tanks Are Empty, 337. 14. The Crash, 322. 15. End Title, 59. Bonus Track. 16. Noodling on the Theremin, 135. Topic. Production Because production issues had delayed the release of George Powell's high-profile Destination Moon, Rocket Ship XM was quickly shot in just 18 days on a $94,000 budget. It was then rushed into movie theaters 25 days before the PAL film, while taking full advantage of Destination Moon's high-profile national publicity. Given the film's minimal special effects budget and limited shooting days, the surface of Mars was much easier to simulate using remote southern California locations than creating the airless and cratered surface of the Moon. The location where the crew exits the spacecraft and begins to explore is Zabriskie Point in Death Valley National Park. The film's original 1950 theatrical release prints had all Mars scenes tinted a pinkish red color. The RxM's design was taken from rocket illustrations that appeared in an article in the January 17, 1949 issue of Life magazine. The interior structure of the spaceship's larger second stage is shown as having a long ladder that the crew must climb. It runs up. Through the RxM's fuel compartment, which has on all sides a series of narrow fuel tanks filled with various propulsion chemicals. By selecting and mixing them together in various proportions, different levels of thrust are attainable from the RxM's engines. 
The crew ladder ends at a round pressure hatch in the middle of a floor bulkhead that leads to the crew's upper living and control compartment. Instruments and technical equipment were supplied by Allied Aircraft Company of North Hollywood. Topic: Historical and factual accuracy. The five Mars explorers wear U.S. military surplus clothing, including overalls and aviator's leather jackets. It has been noted in other film reviews that the explorers are wearing gas masks, but gas masks would include goggles to protect the eyes. Due to the thin Martian atmosphere, the explorers are actually wearing military oxygen breathing apparatuses. OBA, like those used by military firefighters, various scientific curiosities and errors are seen during the film. With less than 15 minutes to go until launch, the RXM's crew are still in the midst of a leisurely press conference being held at a base building. From its launch pad, the RXM blasts straight up, and once it leaves the Earth's atmosphere, the ship makes a hard 90 degree turn to place the RXM into Earth orbit. Its speed at an altitude of 360 miles is stated to be 3,400 miles per hour, 1.5 kilometers per second. In fact, at that height, orbital velocity is 18,783 miles per hour, 8.397 kilometers per second. Though escape velocity is approximately correctly stated to be 25,000 miles per hour, 11 kilometers per second. Simultaneously with that turn, the crew cabin rotates within the RXM's hull, around its lateral axis, so the ship's cabin deck is always facing down, orienting the audience. Though objects are purposely shown to float free to demonstrate a lack of gravity, none of the five crew members float, apparently unaffected by weightlessness. The RXM's jettisoned first stage, with its engine still firing, and a later meteoroid storm, inaccurately referred to in dialogue as meteorites, both make audible roaring sounds in the soundless vacuum of space that can be heard inside the crew compartment. The clusters of those fast-moving meteoroids appear identical in shape and detail. Actually, the same prop meteoroids were shot from different angles and positions, then optically printed in tandem, at different sizes. On the film's master negative, a point is made in dialogue that the RXM is carrying more than double. The amount of rocket fuel and oxygen needed to make a successful round trip and landing on the moon, while impractical for various reasons, this detail becomes a convenient, then necessary plot device in making the later Mars storyline more believable. Several scenes in Rocket Ship XM involving the interaction between the RXM's sole female crew member, scientist Dr. Lisa Van Horn, her male crew, the launch site staff, and the press corps provide cultural insights into early 1950s sexist attitudes toward women. One notable scene involves Van Horn and expedition leader, and fellow scientist Dr. Carl Ekstrom rushing to recalculate fuel mixtures after their initial propulsion problems. When they come up with different figures, expedition leader Ekstrom insists they must proceed using his numbers. Van Horn objects to this arbitrary decision, but submits, and Ekstrom forgives her for momentarily being a woman. Subsequent events prove Ekstrom's arbitrary decision to be wrong, placing them all in jeopardy. Lippert's feature was the first film drama to explore the dangers of nuclear warfare and atomic radiation through the lens of science fiction. These became recurrent themes in many 1950s science fiction films that followed. Dalton Trumbo, blacklisted during the McCarthy era, script doctored the film's Red Planet sequence, adding the horror of an atomic war having occurred on Mars. His name does not appear in the film credits. Topic. New footage added Rocket Ship XM was rushed to market to be in theaters before the more lavishly produced but delayed Destination Moon that was finally released 25 days later. 
A lack of both time and budget forced RXM's producers to omit special effects scenes and substitute stock footage of V-2 rocket launches and flight to complete some sequences that otherwise would have been made using the rocket ship XM special effects miniature. The V-2 inserts created very noticeable continuity issues. In the 1970s the rights to rocket ship XM were acquired by Kansas City film exhibitor, movie theater owner, and later video distributor, Wade Williams, who set about having some of RXM's special effects scenes reshot in order to improve the film's overall continuity. The VHS tape, Laserdisc and DVD releases incorporate this re-shot footage. Williams funded the production of new RXM footage to replace the stock V2 shots and missing scenes. The new footage was produced for Wade Williams Productions by Bob Burns III, his wife Kathy, former Disney designer, artist Tom Sherman, Academy Award winner Dennis Muren, Emmy Award nominee Michael Miner, and Academy Award winner Robert Skotak. Costumes were remade that closely replicated those worn by the film's explorers, and a new, screen accurate Rocket Ship XM effects miniature was built. The new replacement shots consist of the RXM flying through space, it landing tail first on the Red Planet, a different shot of the crew heading away from the RXM to explore the stark Martian surface, the surviving explorers quickly returning to their nearby spaceship, and the RXM later blasting off from Mars into space. Space. These six replacement shots were filmed near Los Angeles in color, then converted to black and white and re-tinted where necessary to match the original film footage. Unlike the DVD release, the earlier Laserdisc of Rocket Ship XM contains extra bonus material documenting the making of the film and the creation of this new footage. The film's production and the making of these new scenes were also presented in RXM feature articles in both Starlog magazine and later expanded in the first issue 1979 of Starlog's spin-off magazine Cinemagic. Prints of the original theatrical release version of RXM are still stored in Williams Kansas City film vaults. They have not been converted to a home video format. Images 50th Anniversary DVD release 2000, under license from Williams, is oddly missing two of his re-filmed Mars scenes. Lippert's original matte painting scene, which has tiny matted in figures leaving an obviously painted RXM, is retained instead of the Williams reshot replacement scene that has the five explorers heading away from a convincing RXM effects miniature standing on a barren Martian plain. A new bridging scene, set at the end of the Mars sequence, showing the surviving explorers hurriedly returning to the RXM, is also missing from Images DVD. Topic. Award nomination Retro Hugo Award, Rocket Ship XM was nominated in 2001 for the 1951 Retro Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation, being one of the science fiction films eligible during calendar year 1950, exactly 50 years after the film's first release. 50 years, 75 years, or 100 years prior is the eligibility requirement governing the awarding of Retro Hugos. Topic. Mystery Science Theater 3000 The film was featured in the second season premiere episode of the cult film lampooning television series Mystery Science Theater 3000. Rocket Ship XM stands as an important episode in that show's history, showcasing iconic set redesigns as well as the introduction of Kevin Murphy and Frank Conniff to their long-running performance roles as Tom Servo and TV's Frank, respectively. Topic. See also 1950 in film List of films set on Mars List of science fiction films of the 1950s